uh, here's the first technique to increase your workflow within Pro Tools. So um, if you want to add some new tracks, a way easier way than having to go all the way up here and add a new track, Shift Command N. So that comes up and uh, then you can enter the number of tracks right there easily and also if you hold down Shift Command you can you can add a bunch of different kinds of tracks and by doing that you hold command and uh, this cycles through if you press the down key it cycles through the different types of tracks you can add audio track aux input master fader midi track instrument track and also within that if you hit le uh, if you hit right you can make it stereo or left if you don't want stereo it goes back to mono so uh, that is one really easy way to set up your session. So for instance, uh, let's say I want to have six audio tracks. I'm going to add, uh, let's see, stereo, and then I'm going to want to have instrument tracks. So let's say five instrument tracks if I'm doing a lot of virtual instruments. Uh, let's see, I'm going to also obviously want to have a master fader and uh, I would say it'd be probably be a good thing to have um, some aux sense too. So make four aux sense and we'll make these stereo and create. So there's all the tracks that have been created with only one menu. So it's way quicker. And uh, in the mix window, it's looking like that, and they're all nicely labeled. So. Uh, or color coded already so uh, that is the first technique thanks okay the next technique that I want to show that is very easy to uh, get down and increase your workflow is grouping tracks and being able to send them to different places all within just a few clicks. So normally, let's say, <clears throat> say we want to send all these tracks to aux1. You know, you could go through here, bus1, and then you can go over here, input bus1, 2, and you can do it for all of them, and so on. But an easier way is, well, we'll keep that the same, but uh, an easier way is select audio1, hold down shift, click on audio6, then what you're going to want to do is hit shift and option and you're going to click the actual output for any one of the tracks and you're going to be able to select the bus you want it to go to. Now all of them change to bus 1 and 2 which is a much easier way to do that than having to sit there and shift through all of them and <clears throat> get them all in the same to send to the same bus. Uh, you can you can do that for any kind of instrument track or audio track or anything like that so that is a really quick way to send different tracks to the same bus technique that I find that helps me increase my workflow is uh, let's say okay so let's say we have a bunch of tracks and they're peeking out on the master but we really like the balance of the overall levels. So let's say, you know, that one, that audio one's there. Maybe this one's a little higher up and so on. So say you got your mixes, your, your balancing and everything is on and, and all that. The balance for the mix is great, but you're just, your level overall is maybe a little bit too loud. Um, <clears throat> so an easy way to remedy that is to hold down shift after you click on one of the tracks go over to audio one as well and uh, you're gonna just make them all into a group so command G group one let's say I don't know we'll call it we like this mix group essentially it's just the all group but now what you can do is you can move them and they all move in proportion to another so now you can still retain the exact same mix balance that you had, but the overall level will be a little bit lower so that there's more headroom. Therefore, mastering is going to be way easier or it'll just turn out better. And uh, yeah. Next technique that I'm going to show you is 
uh, batch fades and also how to combine a whole section of audio tracks into one so that it just looks like a stem basically so first thing you want to, uh, all right so this is actually what it sounds like it's a couple samples that I've chopped up at the end and uh, it's it's from this sample pack called the vengeance samples and uh, they're using a lot of pop music and stuff so this is what it sounds like alone so I did this chopping thing at the end here where I kind of mutilated the sound and did some glitch effects and stuff with it and uh, the zero crossings are not going to be perfect on the file so as you can clearly see there it's less than ideal so the best way to solve this in the quickest amount of time is to highlight them all command F brings up batch fades and then it's gonna fade both the the head and tail of the audio file on all of them so as you can see it did it to all the small ones in there did the cross fade and uh, yeah so now the effects of the clicking and popping won't be so apparent <laughs> sounds a bit smoother so um, now what you can do to make it just a full audio track instead of being a huge like fragmented section is to highlight the entire section that you want so in this case if you want it to be a loop it makes sense to go all the way to the end of the measure you're gonna hit shift option and then the number three and uh, it combines them all so it's uh, it's a way to make your mix look better and it's a way to do fades without having to select each part individually in doing that Right. The next way to increase your workflow that I would say would be um, to be able to see your mix really clearly. So say you have this many tracks, obviously you can't see them all at once. I mean, you can make them smaller or bigger, but you can't see the entire mix window. So an easy way to minimize all the tracks at once. I mean, you can sit there and you can make them all really small, but that's going to take you a little while when you could have gotten to your next uh, objective by then. So an easy way is to grab the first one, go to the bottom of your mix, press shift, and then you're going to hold shift and you're going to hold option as well. And you're going to just do it as if you're minimizing one. And they will all minimize. So that is... I use this a lot because it's just easy to see where everything is in the mix that way. You're not just zoomed in on one waveform the entire time and it's just it gets really hard to to see what's going on in the mix. So uh yeah, this is definitely something that helps me a lot, so hopefully it'll help you. Next technique that I want to show for increasing your workflow would be switching between the different windows so uh, right near here we have the edit window but uh, let's say we want to start mixing the song a little bit getting some levels instead of having to go all the way up here and go to the mix window which requires a few different clicks uh, the easiest way to do this is by just holding down command and the equals and you can switch between edit and mix very easily and uh, if you have a MIDI track or an instrument track essentially that uses a VST uh, a very easy way to get to that window is control equals and this brings you to the MIDI editor so it's uh, it's way faster than having to move your mouse all the way up here and switch between that especially if you're trying to go between MIDI editor and mix and the edit window in short amounts of time okay the next technique that I want to show is uh, making audio regions repeat very quickly so um, as you can see I have down here I have two two kicks 
and three different snares that I'm combining. So I'm going to make a beat out of this essentially, but um, one of the easiest ways to do this is by first using the technique I showed before, which is to combine tracks to a certain length. So shift option three. So that's going to make them all within a grid so that you can easily copy them. So do that to the snares too. Now, if I just want to make a standard four on the floor beat, uh, the easiest way to do this is uh, obviously we've selected our tempo, which is 140, and this is one beat that we have selected. So um, you select the tracks with just uh, holding down on the first track and then holding down shift and clicking the other one below it and command D will copy them. So um, you can also, if you want to have this land right in the exact place, the snare, you can select right where you want it and go all the way over to where the snare is and command D as well. And uh, then after that, if you want to just repeat the entire thing, it's as easy as command D to select the whole thing. So, and then if you want to finalize it into a stem, shift option three makes them all nice and pretty looking. So. The next technique I want to show is enabling safe solo in a quick way. So let's say we have our beat. I'll just play uh, the loop real quick. Okay, so we have our loop. Uh, essentially, um, let's say we want to send this to a bus. So go in here and... Uh, Here's all our tracks right here. So what we're going to want to do is obviously do the same techniques I was showing before, which was shift option and highlight all of the tracks you want to send and select that bus. So now they're all being sent to bus one and two. So now we're going to create a new stereo aux input. And so we got our aux input there. Now we're going to make an input bus one and two. So now when we play the loop, it's all going there. Uh, here's another way for me to implement some of the other techniques I've shown. So we'll group the tracks and we'll play it and bring them down. So now it's at a, a more acceptable level. Uh, so now essentially what we want to do is solo the bus we don't hear anything so we want to be able to hear just that bus soloed so what you're going to want to do is as these are all highlighted you're going to hold shift option and command and you're going to hit the solo button so now what that's going to do is it's going to allow all these tracks to be playing while they're being sent to this bus when this bus is soloed It just makes it a lot easier in the long run when you're trying to hear all the instruments on a certain bus soloed out without the other elements in the mix getting in the way. I want to talk about that can help organize your session uh, is color coding. So by default every track will be a different color when you load it in but it's it gets a little bit tricky to locate everything so uh, after a while because there's so many colors that it becomes similar and and all that so right here we have our symbols two kicks and three snares so they're all different colors now so it's it just looks kind of messy so one way that you can do this is by clicking on the side of one of the tracks colors which brings up the color menu and under tracks you can select clips and tracks so then you highlight the clips that you want and uh, it shows what the two colors are currently and we can change them so let's say we'll change that to orange select the kicks change them to green and we'll select the snares and we'll change them to a teal color so that looks a lot better it, it's easier to tell 
what each instrument is and uh, lets you know that they are the same type of instrument corresponding to the color. The technique I want to show is printing tracks. So let's say we have this beat right here, which is uh, basically it's just kick, snare, and some cymbals. So um, we're going to make them all so that we can solo them out real quick just so you can hear what it sounds like. So. So it sounds cool, but it's using up a bunch of our available tracks, so we want to just bounce it down into one. And also, this is pretty important because if we have a bunch of plugins on it, which I don't right now, but if I did, it would be using up a lot of the DSP and also the CPU power and RAM. So it's, it's much easier to um, print it down so that you're only using one out of your track, less RAM, less CPU. So the way we're going to do that is uh, we're going to create a new track, stereo, audio track. So now what we want to do is select all the tracks we want to bounce down and we're going to send the output to bus 1 and 2 on all of them. And on audio 1, we're going to make the input bus 1 and 2. Now we record enable audio 1 and you can hit the numerical pad 3 which is the key command for record so I had it in loop record as well so make sure we didn't miss any of it but uh, so now we can basically mute all of these tracks right there and now we can just listen to the audio track of all of them combined much less CPU.